You know, there are some things in this world that are uncertain. They might happen, or they might not. Or there's different possibilities, several different ways that they could happen. You flip a coin, it could come up heads, or it could come up tails. You go for a job interview, you might get the job, you might not. You pick a card, any card, it might come up to be the Ace of Spades. You might get the Queen of Hearts, you might get the Five of Diamonds, or you might get any of the other cards in the deck. So, probability is a way of measuring and dealing with this uncertainty, this possibility that this could happen or this could happen. Probability questions often take the form, if you do blank, What's the probability that blank will happen? Like, if I flip a coin, what's the probability that it will come up heads? Or, if I flip three coins, what's the probability of all three coming up heads? Or, if I roll a die, what's the probability of getting a six? Or, if I roll a pair of dice, What's the probability of getting a 10? Or the probability of rolling doubles? Or the probability of at least one of the dice being a 6? And questions like this, involving flipping coins, rolling dice, picking cards out of a deck, these are often used as examples when you're talking about probability because they're fairly simple and you can spell out what all the possible outcomes are and you can treat them as all equally likely. So even though they're kind of artificial, they make good example questions. But probability also applies to more real-world kinds of questions, like if an insurance company sells a driver auto insurance, what's the probability that the driver will be involved in an accident during the next year? They want to know that so that they know about how many of their policies they're going to have to pay out on and what they should charge in order to at least break even and make a profit and not have to pay out more money than they take in. If you take a particular medication, what's the probability of experiencing side effects? Or suppose 12% of the people on whom a new drug was tested experienced headaches. What's the probability that this was just due to chance, that this would have happened anyway, instead of it being caused by the drug. Now these are harder questions to answer, because they involve various different factors. You might have to get some information to help you answer them, and but they are answered using probability. More examples? If you play the lottery, what's the probability that you'll win? If a batter is up to bat, what's the probability that he will get a hit? If a saleswoman calls a potential customer, what's the probability that they will buy whatever it is she's trying to sell them? If you buy a TV, what's the probability that it will quit working, have problems, or need repairs within five years? all examples of probability questions that we might want to be able to assign a number to. The bigger that number is, the more likely the thing is to happen. So when we talk about what's the probability that if you do A, B will occur, the answer to a question like that is a number that represents how likely that is to occur. The bigger the number, the more likely it is to occur. And you can think of the probability number as representing what fraction of the time or what percentage of the time that thing does occur or what percentage of the time it would occur if you could do A over and over again lots and lots and lots of times. If that same baseball player were up to bat lots and lots of times, what percentage of the times does he get a hit? If you bought lots and lots of that particular kind of TV, what percentage of them would have a problem? 
And there are different ways of coming up with the probability number. As an example, consider the question of what's the probability that if you flip three coins, or the same coin three times, that you will get three heads, that it will come up heads on all three coin tosses. One way to answer that question, one approach, would be empirically. That is, you actually do this. You flip three coins, not just once, but over and over and over again, lots and lots of times, and keep track of how often it actually happens that they all three come up heads. So whatever percentage of the time that actually does happen, you can take that as being your probability of it happening on any given time, any given time that you toss the three coins. So that's one approach to coming up with a probability number. Another approach would be to count all the different ways that the three coins could come up. And this is easier to visualize if they're three different coins. So imagine you've got a penny and a nickel and a dime. And then there's eight different ways that those three coins could land. They could all three come up heads, which is what we were talking about if we said they all come up heads. Or the penny and the nickel could both be heads, but the dime could come up tails. Or you could get heads on the penny and the dime, but tails on the nickel. Penny could be heads and the nickel and the dime could be tails. Could be tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, 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 heads, or tails, tails, tails. And if all three of those are equally, or all eight of those are equally likely, so each time you toss the three coins, one of those eight things is what actually happens, and there's no reason any one of them should happen any more often or any more likely than any of the others, then you would expect the one where all three of them come up heads to come up once out of every eight times. So its probability is one out of eight, one eighth. And then another approach would be to combine what you know about individual coin flips using the rules of probability that we are going to be talking about in this chapter. So for example, for each individual coin, if it's a fair coin with heads on one side and tails on the other, then flipping that one coin, you have a one in two chance, a one half probability of that coin coming up heads. So for all three of the coins to come up heads, the probability would be one half times one half times one half. And that's based on a rule that we'll be talking about more in an upcoming section. But one half times one half times one half does come out to be one eighth. So that was my brief introduction to what probability is all about. I'm going to end this video here and then come back in the next video and start on what's officially part of section 4.1, sample spaces and probability. I'll tell you what sample spaces are. I'll define some more terms so we'll know the terminology and we'll look at the basic rules behind how probability works. See you then.